let's actually go through creating a couple of just plain old reports from reporting services. This is going to overlap greatly with the Course 162. Not really anything different in this video than we did in Course 162 with respect to analysis services. Really, let's just kind of use this to see the process, what it takes to create reports. I know that for some of you, this will be the first time you've actually seen reports working within reporting services. So let's kind of just get everybody started on a level playing field here. Now, on this machine, let me kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on. This is a SQL Server 2008 box that I happen to be on right now. So I've downloaded over here Report Builder 3 and Report Builder 2. Which one do I need to install? Report Builder 2. Report Builder 2 is the one that I use for SQL Server 2008. Okay. Report Builder 3 we'll take a look at maybe a couple of videos from now. Uh, we'll take a look. Uh, we'll use Windows 7 as our base operating system and take a look at that. But for now I'm just going to show you Report Builder 2. So I'm, let me go through and just install this. This is a separate install. I go ahead, uh, leave this alone. I, I don't really have to change it. It's going to set the defaults for me to be what I want. I haven't changed my reporting services default. Again, this is not the course for learning installation, configuration, all of that kind of stuff sort of out of the scope of an analysis services class. But I do have my Report Builder 2.0 set up. And you see it actually now in the Start menu being listed. So let me just tell you, for those of you that are the BI architects who have to support some of the BI analysts, you will go install this on your analysts' machines. If this is the tool that you want your users to be doing ad hoc reporting through, then yes, you will take this, you will go and install this on your CEO's desktop, on your uh, manager's desktop, etc. This is the tool they will use for ad hoc reporting. Okay. Alright, so let me go ahead and launch it. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, I think I did, but yeah, I did. I remember. This is my favorite tool for just doing basic one-off reports or for doing ad hoc reporting. It's such an easy tool. This is one of those areas where Microsoft kicked you-know-what on the usability side of things. My biggest complaint with SQL Server 2005 and 2008 and 2008 R2, I think they've, they've made it unnecessarily unusable in some way. And when I say unusable, I don't mean in the true sense that you can't use it. I mean that it, it's not a very user-friendly system. I think they could have definitely done a lot of things better. Uh, however, this tool is awesome to me. It's very user-friendly. Uh, you do have to come to it with a little bit of knowledge. Now, it's not going to make up for any deficiencies that you would have in terms of, uh, I don't know what reports are. Okay, but it's going to do a great job if you have the basics down. So let me go ahead here. We want to create a report. So let's just make an internet sales report. And if you're like most of us, what we'll do is we'll create report templates. And they'll have our fancy graphics and headers and footers. And they'll define the fonts and everything. And we'll actually start from that template as opposed to starting from this blank page here. For the time being, though, I don't have one of those. Let's just kind of go with just a basic layout right here. If you want, you can click down here and you can add your little kind of a wizard, if you will, takes you through adding either a table, a matrix, or a chart, uh, which really behind the scenes is going to create a tablix, if you know what that means here. Uh, we'll kind of explain. We'll do matrix. Uh, we, let's see. We'll do matrix in two videos from now, maybe three videos from now. We'll just do. We'll stick with table stuff and some charts uh, for right now. Uh, okay. So over here on the left-hand pane is the report data. This is your connections. All right. So your connections go here. And a report's going to probably just have one connection, but your bigger dashboards, your bigger, uh, 
scorecards and things like that, you may have multiple connections here. Some go to your data warehouse, some go to your OLAP cube, some go to the live data sources. So where I always start may be a little bit different from you. Everybody's got their style, I guess. You need to make yourself a connection. So I'm going to make a new data source. The data source needs to be, which one do I want to pick here? Uh, do I want to use a shared connection? Or do I want to have this connection just for this report? Shared connections are nice because you can have many reports that are built from the same connection. And that makes theoretically makes your development time faster as well as change management a lot easier. If you need to change the server name, you don't have to change 50 reports. You can change the single connection. Okay. Uh, but I'm just going to embed it in this report. And here's our data source. Well, you can guess the guy that we want is the analysis services, right? So I need to pick analysis services. And I need to build. And I need to type in my server name and which database. Now I have, for this samples, I have the sample cube that comes with SQL Server 2008 that we kind of covered uh, at the end of Chapter 6 here. So that's what you're looking at, the AdventureWorks DW 2008. What's the SE stand for? Standard Edition. Okay, That's the one that I have here. I say okay. I have to find one data source. Give it a name if you want to. You can change names. You can call it SSAS. That's just a friendly name. But I can't do anything with that yet. What I really need, what a report is built on top of, is a data set. So I can come over here and say new data set, or I can right click and add a data set. And now I choose the data source, and so this is. This is our mapping right here. It's just mapping straight to that. I can name this data set one. Where do I get the query? Now notice that table and stored procedure are grayed out because we're using an analysis services source. Okay? That wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense when you're hooked up to a cube. So what you're going to do, you can come down here and click on the query designer. Or if you have an MDX file, you can import that MDX right here. So I can say Query Designer. And it brings up something similar to the Cube browser that we played with inside of Visual Studio. Right, this is just a standard little Cube browser. Here are your measures. Uh, we could like grab the internet order count. Uh, we could say buy... Um, I don't know, we grab some customer geography, like buy country for example. So that's what I want. That's how I want it. So I say OK. And you can see what's actually happened behind the scenes. What did it do? What is that? Yeah, that's that absolutely beautiful MDX. Isn't it gorgeous? Where you get to define the back color and the font name and awesome. <laughs> I'm a purist. That's just don't like that stuff. Anyhow, uh, it has given us a couple of things that are of uh, premier importance. We're again chapter ten. We're going to talk more about MDX, but we're getting the cells that are not empty, and we're getting the measures for the internet order count. That's going to become our column data, our columnar data, and then we're going to grab the customer geography for the country. We want to get all of the members. And then there's some other things that it lists, uh, that, but really that's on rows. So the countries are the rows, the members are the columns, and when we look at it again in the query designer, that's exactly what it's done. Again, we will come to seeing that a good deal later. Now we don't have any parameters. We're going to talk about doing MDX parameters. Oh, probably towards the end, maybe like um, video 7 or 8 or 9 or something like that. We're going to switch over and talk about MDX instead of using that query designer. And we'll come back and talk about parameters and fields and some of the other options here. But I have a data set now. Now I have a choice. I can come over here and I can basically run this wizard that uh, allows me to choose a table. So I'm going to use my existing data set. It shows me the columns that are part of 
the data set. I say next and I can make some decisions here. What do you want on rows? Well, I want the country on rows. Okay, so you drag it. Remember, we in our MDX, that's the same, same exact definition. We want the country on rows. And the values, the columnar data, we actually want to look at the order count. So I say no. How do you want this to actually show up? Do you want subtotals and grand totals to be calculated here? Now, this is where reporting services is actually taking over and calculating these subtotals and grand totals. What kind of prettiness do you want to add to it? feel oceany say finish and it's added it and inevitably it's not quite large enough or big enough or this isn't wide enough or something needs to change but what we can actually do now is we can click the run button and it's basically previewing the report for us now we're not actively hooked up to a live report server just yet uh, we know that because down in the bottom there's no current report server. But it did actually run our sales report. Now, do we have drill down? No, nothing like that. Uh, do we have subtotals? Well, we have a grand total here. But we really don't have a second level, a second dimension from which to look at this data. We're looking at this data by country. That's the only thing that we've defined here. But what we would do right now is we could do a lot of things. We could export this to various file formats. This is our ad hoc reporting, right? We are, uh, you know, we're Mary in the human resources department, and she wants to run a quick employees report. So we give her the query to build her data set, and she's able to just run, and you know, she's got to learn row groups and column groups and a couple of those tools there. Uh, but she can do the ad hoc reporting. Or... We can come up here to the, uh, this is sort of the Office uh, style, Microsoft Office style button, and we can save this. So I can say that I want to save it as an RDL file, which is the file, or if I tell it that I want to save here, uh, we actually can go to the recent sites and servers, and I can save this on my report server. So we can actually publish this onto the report server. Now, we're not hooked up to a server, but let's actually tell it to use a particular server. So we can actually tell it we want to use this particular server. So that's our server. Use that particular report server. Uh, and we can now publish this and send it out and run this report and play around with it. Okay? So that's the basics of Report Builder 2.0. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. I want to do something similar, but use the Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a little bit different. I'm going to make a new project. You'll notice that I have these for the report servers. Where did they come in? How did they get here? These are installed when you install SQL Server, and specifically the client tools. That's what gets installed here. Okay, so they get placed into your Visual Studio. So if you're on your machine and you have Visual Studio and you have C Sharp and VB, not the same. That's not what we have right here. Right? This is installed by SQL Server. So I, would, I can create a report server project using a wizard, but I'm going to make just a blank project. Come over here to my Solution Explorer. Well, let's make ourselves a data source. Use analysis services. Exact same thing I did in the, in the report builder. Choose my database. Come down here. Now I want to make a new report. If I say add new report, it's actually going to launch the report wizard. It's an OK thing. I'm not a big fan, but look, here's the same query designer, the same query builder that we had uh, before. I don't even know what's in here uh, anymore. Okay. Uh, get some nice, do you want a table or do you want a matrix? Again, we're going to talk about matrix reports a couple of videos from now, so I'm going to stick with tabular. 
Uh, do you want to group these together in any way? Well, I kind of do because the category is the highest level here. So the category contains the type and then the promotion, right? And then I actually want to see the details at the order count level. So we're going to make it go through multiple levels here. And do you want it step? Do you want blocks around everything? Do you want subtotals? Choose your prettiness. I feel bold. Give it a name. Fancy report. Say finish. Okay. <laughs> Hit the preview button. Yeah, I mean, this is just like the report builder, isn't it? Okay, so it's a, you know, it's not that pretty of a report. You can see our nesting that we have here. A category rolls down to a type, down to a promotion. So it looks like here these are the reseller category. There are only two types, and then we have promotions under each, each underneath each one. We can see the subtotals. We can see the grand total. Uh, well, just the subtotals for these here. You would clearly want to make this better. Uh, you would go back to your design and you would say, you know what, I think this should be a little bit wider and, you know, what kind of fool would choose these colors and, <laughs> you know, you can actually come over here and you can design your text box and you can say that you want it very much like in analysis services that you want this to have commas or it's currency. Just click your preview button and it's back to doing that. now. It's kind of like a WYSIWYG as well. You can click here. Uh, you can, where's my uh, text editor here, um, text editor here. And so I can tell it that I want it to be in the middle. Why am I not seeing that? There it is right there. I don't know uh, why that's not. Anyhow, I want that. I want it to be in the center. And so when I do that now, that's aligned center. Um, then we would go and we would deploy this, and that would put it on our reporting services server. Um, I To show you this, to finish out with this, we'll kind of close with this part. One of the advantages of using the Visual Studio over the Report Builder is that, A, if you're already comfortable with Visual Studio, here you are. You don't have to leave. You don't have to have a separate tool. B, you can make new projects. So I can actually add new projects. I can add existing projects. And really, I'll, I'll show you this. Watch. I can go to the standard. Here is my analysis services report, uh, or my analysis services uh, cube. And see, I have it in here. So now I have my analysis services project and the report project that reports from it. I can also add in new projects. When we get to chapter was it 10, we're going to do our ETL strategies, chapter 9. God, I get so confused as to the numbers. Maybe it's 8. No. When we start talking about SSIS, I would bring that in here as well. So it's sort of a unified development environment, an IDE, an integrated development environment. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and stop here. We're going to come back. I want to talk to you about matrix reports later. We're going to talk about uh, the drill down, drill through. we got a bunch of stuff we're going to play with here over the next several videos.